Welcome back to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I am the host of the show. I'm here with Kevin Tom Thomas. Yep. See, I always mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wanted to say Thompson. No, nope. <laughs> not Thompson. But uh, but yeah. So uh, we're gonna get into a conversation about what he does. But first, we're gonna read off the ads. We only have one ad for today, and that is actually the show. It's for it's to to promote the advertising space on the show. Actually, we yeah. have one month long deals six month long deals and uh, year long deals. I think the year long deals are still because as the show grows, you're gonna lock in that, that price for that year. Uh, so if the show, the reach of it uh, grows, the cost of that is going to, to go grow as well. So if you lock that in now, you'll have that for an entire year. Cause uh, we're gonna be really uh, going hard in promoting the show and really growing it. And uh, the CPMs are typically how that, that's calculated, which is the cost per thousand, uh, how many, how many views you, you are getting and the value of it too. Uh, this is specific for Colorado, uh, Colorado Springs. So if you're a business owner here in Colorado Springs, it might be a good idea to, to advertise on the show. <laughs> Beans, it's called the COS Business Podcast. Yes, yeah, exactly. I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, the ad for the day and uh, we'll get started. Roll the intro music. This is a show where we have real conversations with the business owners and business professionals here in Colorado Springs. Kevin, how's it going? Great. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so tell me a little bit about what you do. And I know you don't, you don't own that business. Nope. Uh, but you are sales and sales is a big part of business. Well, it, you know, one thing that people don't realize is that um, when you work for as a salesperson for another person and you're basically a higher percent commission, you have your own little business that you're running mm -hmm there with the assistance of somebody that does like pays the lights and the and the bills and you're yeah. splitting part of your the profits with them in the form of that commission so that's really it it is like having your own little sure. business without having to have the brick and mortar that and deal mm -hmm. with all the day-to-day -day stuff all the, the 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 what do they call that administration stuff tedium yeah <laughs> the tedium so exactly that tedium tedium yeah tedium like a word or tdm no tedium uh tedium like the minutia the the oh, tiny little stuff sweet. that the... that's a new word i haven't learned yet. yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome it's... I, I know tedious, so maybe that's yeah. a derivative of that. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Nice. <laughs> that's fantastic. So, so how long have you been in sales? Um, about twenty years, a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. I started in nineteen ninety seven when I uh, moved here, but I've done a few little things in between, but mm -hmm. but mostly sales um, since about ninety eight. Oh, so wow. yeah, <laughs> so about twenty two years, Sweet. and uh, <laughs> I just really enjoy it. Um, it's. It, I think that uh, sales is a transfer of trust mm. and um, it's a way for me to be of service to the community and things like that. Um, a lot of people look at car salesmen as kind of a, a negative, you know. And They're it's the an, poster uh, child yeah. of, of, of sleazy salesmen. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it really isn't, doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. If you come in and you're willing to work with me, it can be a win for me, a win for you, and a win for the dealership. Mm -hmm. So... That's what I always go for is that triple win. Okay. So so you you say uh, being a salesman is like owning your own business. Yeah. Because it, it, it essentially is. Uh, and so what have been some of your best uh, ways to increase sales, I guess? Well, you know... Uh, the old edge, if we if I don't take care of the customer, someone else will. Mm -hmm. And I think that where a lot of salespeople and businesses that have to sell a product or something like that is uh, they miss is customer service. And I think customer service is critical. Mm -hmm. um, if you take care of the customer, you treat them with respect when they come in. And even and you don't forget about them after the sale. Mm. I think a lot of people forget about them after the sale. The mm -hmm. follow up is is critical, and um, those referrals that come in from your existing customers really help you build your business. Mm -hmm. And that in today's day, day and age with Yelp and Google and everything else and the internet, I mean, if you get one disgruntled customer, mm -hmm. it's gonna really hurt your business. So sure. they say that. A happy customer will tell one person. Oh, yeah. An unhappy customer will tell 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> so based on that, I have always tried to do everything I can to make my customer happy. Mm -hmm. And as long as I get close to that or, 
or really try to complete that goal, I think I, I have a successful business. And I have okay. been successful in sales for the past 22 years. Nice. Yeah. So how do you keep a customer happy? What are some of your techniques? Um, you know, communication. Communication is really key. Uh, if you, it may be just something, a little oversight that you forgot about or they forgot about or something like that. But if you call that customer or you reach out to them via email or text or even through social media, um, you know, it really makes a difference in their life. You know, it just, it just a, hey, I'm just following up to make sure that, that uh, everything's going well, even if you haven't spoken to them in uh, a month, six months, a year, mm -hmm. just to call that customer and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. You're still my customer. I want to retain you as my customer. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a real good friend that owns a barbershop here in town. I'm going to give her a little plug. Um, okay. It's Caveman Barbershop, and, okay. uh, and, uh, and Patty owns it, and she's been there forever. She's been cutting my hair for 10 years. Nice. Mm -hmm. And every person that walks in her door, she knows their name, if they've ever been there before. If it's a, a new mm -hmm. face... She's like, oh, you're a new face. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it makes you awesome. feel <laughs> at home. It's like, you know, walking in the door, you're at home. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. You're yeah, here, yeah. you know, or hi, Chip, you know, whatever, you yeah. know. It, it does just, make you feel it, good. Yeah. It does. And, and remembering little details like that, like I recently had a customer that um, they both came in and they were wearing Alabama Mm -hmm. uh, logos and uh, things. This, oh, are you from Alabama? Yeah, we're from Alabama. We're in the military. We're stationed out here and this and that. And um, as a thank you for purchasing the car, I bought them the Alabama uh, University version of Monopoly and sent it to their house. Oh, that's nice. And they were just like, this so is fun. so cool <laughs> because we, they have two small kids. Mm -hmm. It's something they can do for family game night. And share memories. It was really, really thoughtful. It yeah. wasn't just a gift. It wasn't, here's a piece of candy. Yeah. It's or a $5 Starbucks gift yeah, card or exactly. something like that. It, it's really, it's specific to them. Mm -hmm. And I always try to get uh, get to know a customer and make a mm -hmm. friend, as they say. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't do that in every business. But in my business, I'm spending two or three hours, mm -hmm. even longer and sometimes. And every sell is, is a big commission for you. Or, or I wouldn't. It? I wouldn't say a big commission. Um, you know, if I it, it, I can make a living selling ten cars a month, but um, it's not a very good one. Mm -hmm. So I can make a good living exponentially more the more cars I sell. If I sell sure. between uh, eleven and seventeen cars in a month, then then it starts to get good. But mm -hmm. the average car salesman in Colorado Springs and in the state of Colorado sells nine cars a month. Ooh. So you so figure you you're one of average? maybe one or two sales that that person had that week. So that's really something to be conscious of, mm -hmm. um, especially at the end of the month. You know, those guys are trying to make their numbers and, and do anything they can to sell you a car. So, mm -hmm. And that, I guess the industry, that's kind of why it's become the poster child of that, because it's, its incentives are based around, you know, Selling more cars, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And, but I guess that, that also could incentivize you to become a, a better person, because if you're a better person, you're a better salesman. <laughs> well, you know, there's, a, like you say, the typical sleazy car salesman mm -hmm. or used car salesman. Slaps the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kicks the tire. And you're like, yeah, that's a great car. Whatever, <laughs> you know, that's, that. there are still people like that in our industry. In every industry. Yeah. They're, they're rather short-lived, though. They, mm -hmm. they usually are there for or at a specific dealership for a short period of time and then they mm -hmm. move on to a different dealership. They're the ones that every six months short they're time. they're mm -hmm. they're going on to a different dealership because they've burned all the bridges and ruined their reputation as mm -hmm. much as they can at that dealership because those people are starting to come back and say, Hey, he, he you know, didn't do this or they're posting online reviews. And so the sales managers have to be really careful who they hire um, because you don't want your dealer reputation burned to the ground with a few bad apples oh for sure yeah, yeah you know all right so 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 uh i guess my next question would be what does phil long uh, do for you um everything i mean there uh we're a very old established dealership we have 18 different dealerships mm -hmm. in the in 
in the state of Colorado. We're the oldest dealership in the state of Colorado, mm-hmm. I, I believe. I would bar- bargain that you guys are probably the biggest one in Colorado Springs. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, we, we own a big chunk of Mercy. We sell um, a bunch of different kinds of cars. I can't remember all of them, but... Um, Chevrolet, um, Ford, Hyundai, Kia, um, you know, all the, the major brands, Mm -hmm. they pretty much got covered. Um, there are a few other brands that aren't under the umbrella, but it, it definitely helps me because I can sell all those different brands. Mm -hmm. I don't have to just sell Hyundais because I work at the Hyundai dealership and people, a lot of times will put you in that box because you work at one dealership. Mm -hmm. And for most people, that's true. I mean, like, if you are selling at uh, the BMW dealership and there's only one BMW dealership, then that's all you can sell. Mm-hmm. And they're used uh, cars there. But they, I mean, it's not like you can go, hey, let me get another car for you or whatever. Um, but we have such buying power and such a large dealership and a great reputation mm-hmm. for that there. Um, in in Colorado, in Colorado Springs especially, um, I think that... It, that, that, that brand that, kind of helps uh, sell, sell a oh, lot for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, the brand is is huge. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and they have their system set up in place where everything runs very smoothly. Mm. So if a person comes in and they're prepared to purchase a car, mm-hmm. um, they, they, they've done their research on the internet, which 80% of our customers have done research on the internet before they ever, ever oh, come in yeah. through the door. Before the internet, uh, I've heard... Uh, car dealerships, uh, the internet was kind of a game changer for the whole dealership industry. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Around that time, you saw a lot of dealerships going to one one pricing. Mm-hmm. And that's good and bad for the uh, the people that know how to buy a car. Now people right? can k- Kelly Blue Book it and everything. And- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Kelly Blue Book is a good resource. Uh, Edmunds online is a good resource. So if you do your research and you come in and you're prepared to buy a car, it goes pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. So a typical customer would come in, I would meet and greet them at the door. We would go out and look at the different brands or kinds of car they want. So let's say they come in and they say, hey, I'm interested in a Kona, Mm -hmm. um, which is one of our best-selling brands, right? Or best-selling models right now. Mm -hmm. And we'd go out on the lot and we would test drive the car or find a color that they want and the equipment level they want Mm -hmm. because each car, each model has different equipment levels. Um, And then we'd test drive the car, come back in, maybe if they have a trade, evaluate their trade and then work the numbers. Mm -hmm. And once we decide on numbers, it's just a matter of getting them financed and through finance and handing them the keys and delivering them a a freshly cleaned car with full tank of gas. and delivered? Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, we, we have the uh, Phil on Concierge service now. You can actually never set foot in the dealership. You can do everything nice. over the phone and the internet. Was that uh, an advancement that came out of COVID? Um, it was available before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something in place that was there before. Mm-hmm. But um, definitely uh, COVID kind of kickstarted that mm-hmm. and, and pushed that forward that quite a bit. Does that you guys as well? Uh, does it help accelerate sales? Um, yes, to a certain extent. Um, I think that, uh, it's still best to come to the dealership. Okay. I think, I, I think if you really want, um, I mean, just looking at a car online and not actually driving it first is not as advantageous as because sure. you don't fall in love with that car. There's an experience you know. that you're missing out on. And you may have not seen that, that orange Kona that just totally mm. does it for you. Compared I to mean, the one you thought you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> you, you see the, the green one and you think, oh, well, that green, I love that green that has the internal stitching. And then right next to it is that orange one that maybe you didn't see online or mm-hmm. you didn't know that was available because you didn't do research that portion of it. Portion of it, And you're like, oh, man, yeah, yeah. I wish I would. And then you come in for service and you see one and you're like, oh, no, I want that one, mm-hmm. you know, but... Um, you know, in the last thing, the I always say the most important, the most expensive car you're ever going to own is one you don't like. So mm-hmm. it's the second largest purchase you're going to make in your life. Other For than sure. a home, 
um, unless you're a millionaire and you're buying a yacht or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, your car is your second largest purchase. Sure. Also, it's a purchase that depreciates, mm -hmm. um, you know, and hopefully your home appreciates. So yeah. that's not as <laughs> critical or it is pretty important, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting a good deal on that car. Mm -hmm. So especially smart finance people is uh, when people come in and they really know how to buy a car, they get the what best about deal. What the people that don't? How do you treat? How do you guys take them through the process? Um, we we still take them through the process just like everybody else. Um, and I will. That's where your car salesman and having a good honest car salesman makes a difference. A dishonest car salesman will take advantage of that person. Mm -hmm. I won't do that. I won't ever. You know, put somebody in something that one their payments outrageous and they're just what we call buried in the car. In other words, they paid so much for the car mm -hmm. that. As soon as they drive off the lot, they have a firm grip on that car for the next five years mm -hmm. until they have a little bit of equity. Mm -hmm. I like to see people in a new car every three years. So I'm looking to gain that customer for life. Mm -hmm. I want you to come back and say, oh, well, Kevin's my car guy. It fell on. My cars usually break down every three years. <laughs> well, they, they're not buying a new car, probably, you know, so. Um, and that's one nice thing about Hyundai is they have a 10-year, 100,000-mile uh, drivetrain warranty, mm -hmm. a five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, three years of maintenance is included, five-year of uh, roadside assistance, and a se seven-year, uh, it doesn't really matter here because... Back east it would be, but for some of our military personnel that uh, go to other parts of the country, the paint perforation. Um, so, like, if it rusts through, you mm -hmm. know, you've seen, like, the bubbles on cars back yep. east and in back more, east, uh, like, in New York, Florida, yeah. places that get a lot of humid, uh, humid places that, you know, cars are made of metal, metal rusts. Mm -hmm. You know, so the anti-rust and the paint perforation, they'll get those little bubbles on there, but you'll see it there in older me, calls. It reminded me of something, a story of someone who, who would flip windshields on, on eBay. And they would get them all from like uh, Arizona because there's like no rust. Like they were, all, there was something special about that, that climate that made it very profitable for him. <laughs> huh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there is so many aspects and... The car business really feeds so many people. And mm -hmm. I mean, from the car wash people to the people at your local 7-Eleven, because you stop in there for gas, you get a cup of coffee, you get this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that all started with that car purchase. Mm -hmm. So the tire true. person, the, I mean... The, the, the construction people making the roads. Yeah, the, <laughs> I mean, it's all tied into that initial car purchase. Because mm -hmm. if you're riding a bike, you know, it just doesn't... It doesn't make a difference, you know. So, I Which mean, I'm thinking about getting a bike and driving to or right, uh, riding my bike to work. Every yeah, day. I mean, like electric bikes are really on the up upswing right now, and I mean, you can get an electric bike for under uh, a couple thousand dollars. It and it wouldn't surprise me if I if I started making them. Um, well, definitely, uh, that's a that's a good segue for me. Um, <laughs> our electric vehicles are really coming into their mm. own. Uh, I mean, everybody thinks electric vehicles. They think Tesla, but not everybody has Tesla money. They've got three models coming out, right? I think I've seen the post. Maybe um, no, we will have the Kona and the Ionic, and then um, there's another one. But I, I'm still kind of learning the Hyundai brand and things like that uh, uh, as far as the EV goes. Mm -hmm. But the uh, I just went to an electric vehicle club here in town. Oh, sweet. And... Sweet. Um, they were all kind of, I took the Kona, and um, it's the small SUV, but it's all electric. It has about a 350-mile range, mm. and they were all flying over it because they it look did Tesla -esque. have... Tesla-esque. Like, they kind of look like Tesla. Yep, yep. <laughs> Everything's smoother, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's, it's funny that uh, you should say something about uh, electric vehicles because that's... That's the future. It I really mean, is, yeah. it, 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 you aren't going to see as many gas stations. You're mm -hmm. going to see a lot more people with, especially in a commuter car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to have, drive across country in an electric vehicle. That's a whole different ball game. Well, but, once once advancements in the technology improves, it's going to change the game completely. Like when, once once batteries are able to charge like that, it's game yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, that's uh, the the 
the battery technology is getting there and lithium bath batteries are definitely uh um good but if when they get to that next level mm -hmm. we've went from alkaline to batteries to lithium batteries but batteries are going to change the world definitely. that is definitely the future and um even now though i mean if you can drive 350 miles, I'm sure you don't drive 350 miles a week. Maybe every two weeks charge your car or, mm -hmm. you know, while it's sitting downtown and you're at work or something like that, it can sit there and get to a full charge every day. Yeah, or sleep in, you know, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, wherever you're at. It's kind of like your phone, you know, it stays charged pretty much all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and that that is one of those things. It's uh, the battery technology is really gonna be mm -hmm. the game changer you're 100 percent correct there so i'd like to go a little bit uh back on the follow-up process of, of you what is what is your follow-up process do you have do you have uh, reminders in your calendar because uh, there's one thing that i want to do for for my business my video production company is uh i actually i kind of started it but i haven't really been consistent at it i have in my calendar exactly a year from the day i close a deal with the client uh, exactly a year, I have a reminder to give them a present unique to them. Like maybe they like a certain football team or yeah. or, or whatever, you know. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So that's kind of what I'm going Yeah, on. yeah. Um, I, I try to not be like exactly to a year. Mm -hmm. I try to make it at different times. Like mm -hmm. um, one company I talked to, and I thought this was a great idea, um, half birthdays. Okay. So you you know what the you always get the birthday of your client, mm -hmm. um, and happy uh, happy birthday just because it's unique. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally not. Yeah. It, it's out of the blue. Uh, hey, happy happy half birthday it makes today, and they go, <laughs> it's oh yeah, in six months, it's exactly six months to the day for my birthday next year. Great, okay, uh, yeah, you know, and nobody's sending a half birthday card. Or, exactly, it's it's unique and different, and I, I, I like really it. I really liked that idea. Um, so that's something I do. Um, also know their anniversaries. I mean, get to know your clients, Be mm -hmm. make them a friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really critical because if you, if you don't take care of your customer, it goes back to the thing, somebody else is gonna, um, and if you make that relationship and form that relationship on LinkedIn, the social media, mm -hmm. the, um, that's how we met on yeah. LinkedIn Easy, and, yeah. uh, it really makes a difference in their their life because they see your videos every day or every week or every month or whenever they you know you pop up in their news feed. It always keeps you in their mind, and that's why I, social media marketing is is, is important because yeah. you can stay relevant in people's minds, and that's that's when people will be like, oh. Someone's looking for a videographer. They need it. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, they refer you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of my customers come from the fact that they'll be driving around or something like that, and um, they'll go show their car to a friend that, that may, maybe they haven't seen in a couple weeks, and they're like, "Oh, you got a new car? Oh yeah." Da, da, da. Well, I want them to say, "Yeah, we had a great experience at Phil Long Hyundai. You should go down and talk to Kevin because yeah. he's mm -hmm. my car guy." So that's my branding uh, right there is I want to be your car guy, yeah. you know. And, and hopefully someone will fall in love with you here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, I've been married 18 years. You don't have to oh, fall yeah. in love with me. You just have to, uh, you know, uh, I mean, like, uh, really like me. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying and stuff like that. I think that that's – and part of that follow-up process, I, I'm not trying to avoid the question, yeah, yeah. is um, – so I call a person after the sale mm -hmm. and just say, hey, you know, how are things going? Um, did you have any questions on the car? Because when I deliver it, I go through everything from A to Z with mm -hmm. them. And but they're so excited in that sales process sure. and the adrenaline's run and they've been there for a few hours and they're just like, I just want to go drive my new car and I mm -hmm. want to show it to X because there's always that one person they want to show their car to. Yeah. You know, their best <laughs> friend their neighbor that just got his new car six months mm -hmm. ago, you want to pull up in your driveway in and show off your new car. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then about a week later, I'll call him and I'll say, hey, do you have any questions? Da, da, da. Um, what can I do for you today to make you happy? Or, or basically, mm -hmm. is there anything I can do for you to, to really help you out and, mm -hmm. and to pursue that? So you have and, about a week to follow up? Uh, one day, uh, one week, one month, and then it'll kind of taper off after that. And then it'll be half birthdays, anniversaries, 
Um, we yeah. have a really good uh, CRM in our, our system and having that for your customers and to be able to follow up with them is critical. And for those who might not know what CRM, what does that stand for? Um, I don't know what it stands for, but it's a customer resource management or yeah, something. Yeah. Or, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what it stands for, but basically it's a list of all your customers and all their information, their demographics and things like that. So yeah, it, it basically is a spreadsheet and you can do it in Excel uh, mm -hmm. with your- I They mean, have templates for them actually. And one thing to remember is that information is getting information from your customers, uh, whether that's through a service that gets you the, your customers' information mm -hmm. through cards, credit card swipes, mm -hmm. uh, rewards programs, anything like that is critical to follow up with them. So when a customer comes in, the first thing that, that, that I do is I sit down with them and do a very consultive mm -hmm. uh, information. So I have a form that I, I fill out, I do it on my uh, iPad, but I name, address, mm -hmm. telephone number, what they're looking for, how many kids they have, what their driving habits are. What and those questions gonna... are important because you, you, they're cars. Like it, right. all those questions relate to cars. I actually have a similar form on my website called a discovery form. And it's, it's related to like business questions because right. we're trying to help your business. Out. Right. So, so understanding kids is, it's, it may seem weird. Like, why do you want to know how many kids I have? Well, how many kids do you need to fit in your car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have four kids and I'm looking at a car with four seats in it yeah. or five seats, five, that's not going to be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the Palisade with eight, you know, third row seating and things like that. And you would probably tell me that mm -hmm. through the process, for sure. but in my mind, it might it be helps different. You be better prepared. And, you know, we always have people coming in and they're like, no, I'm single. Oh, really? Are you engaged? Are you dating anyone seriously right now? And people will be like, wow, you're getting a little personal here. And I always, I, I try to make my customers com comfortable and, yeah, and yeah. make them laugh. And I go, oh, no, I, I've been married 18 years. Don't take me wrong. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and most of them gets a chuckle. You know, I, I, I didn't know you were into middle-aged fat guys. Um, <laughs> So that's, so, how you, that's, that's how you break that balance, though. Yeah, you break that com comfort from those yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and uh, like I said, make a friend. I always treat it like it's a conversation over a glass of beer or mm -hmm. uh, something like that. For sure. You know, and <laughs> and it really, it really kind of breaks the ice, and it it teaches it, it teaches other people how to gain that rapport. Because if they don't trust you, if they don't like you, mm -hmm. and they don't trust you. They're never going to buy anything from you. They know, like, and trust. And thankfully, Phil Long has got that no for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they know the like... name. Um, I think I'm a pretty likable guy. I don't get along with 100% of my customers. You know, some people have bought for me. And I, I'm just like, well, I just didn't click with that person. Yeah. But um, I would say that. Which is inevitable. Yeah, inevitable. There's other personalities out there. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, if you're real analytical and you don't have much of a sense of humor, I'm, I'm probably not your guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're jovial and, and like to have fun, mm -hmm. I think car buying, I, people look at it and they're like, oh man, I gotta go buy a new car. Mm -hmm. they just, my car just, <laughs> my, my car just got totaled out because of hail or whatever. Mm -hmm. or, uh, my car's breaking down and they just told me it's going to be $3,000 to repair it. I, I gotta go buy a new car. This thing's a junk. Mm -hmm. I gotta get rid of it. It feels so, good though when you get that new car. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you walked into a dealership and you met a salesperson and you just felt he was kind of swarmy and, mm -hmm. and just not a good guy and, you know, had the typical, you know, polyester suit look to him, you know, the mm -hmm. used car guy, you're not going to want to buy a car from him. And if you do, you're not going to feel good about it. Yeah, yeah. But if you come into a professional dealership and, and someplace like Phil Long, mm -hmm. um, not that other dealerships are bad or anything like that. I don't want to discourage people from shopping. But um, I always say when people tell me, oh, well, I want to shop around. Mm -hmm. I always go, well, do me a favor. Before you purchase anything, come back and see me and tell me about your experience. Because that's one of the questions in my follow-ups mm -hmm. always. Because a lot of people will say, oh, well, I want to go look at this other model or it, we, we've you follow narrowed up it. with those people oh absolutely yeah quickly That's too. Vital. <laughs> the average person will come into the dealership and they will buy a car within 72 hours if you mm -hmm. make it as far as the dealership Usually you're gonna it, buy a car within 72 and their hours. percentage probably drops really a lot as if they go and look at someone else like coming back so, so yeah. that follow-up is important. Yeah, so yeah so calling them in a few hours uh, after they leave and, mm -hmm. and just saying Hey, you know, I, I really enjoyed speaking with you. How is the, the process going? Mm -hmm. 
because they went to some other dealership and they may have met that yeah, yeah. that typical car salesman that they Definitely. didn't want to meet. Whereas hopefully when they come and see me, they met somebody that they want to hang out with and would have a beer with, you know, and and things like that. For that's sure. that's that's the whole process. I want to help somebody one through that difficult process of buying a car because everybody thinks I don't want to get taken advantage of. I don't want to spend a lot of time looking for what I want, and I want somebody that's going to understand my needs. Yeah. So that's where that trust and and like and uh, mm-hmm. all that comes into play. So why does it take when I when when you go to a car dealership? Why does it take forever to get the car? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Um, you know, I ask that. You know, every car salesman asks the the sales manager that too. Why does yeah. this have to take so long? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of sometimes the, it feels like it's being prolonged just so that you're more eager to get the car. I don't know it, if that's it, true. It, no, I, like and I, I don't think that's the case mm-hmm. most of the time. Mm-hmm. In some of those dealerships that are, you know, not as professional and have mm-hmm. as good a reputation as Phil Long and they're does. they're just trying to get a sale. Yeah, <laughs> they're just trying to get a sale um, and then go on to the next dealership. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they do, you know, kind of. They'll go in the back and they'll have a cup of coffee and then come back. Oh, I got you a great deal with the manager. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You know, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I that. <laughs> basically what usually takes the longest is you have two or three sales managers mm-hmm. working deals with 14 different mm-hmm. salespeople. So a couple of insider tips here. Um, come towards the end of the month. Mm. Uh, always. Uh, oh, that's stopped. Nope. I'm glad it just stopped too, right? When you okay. Over there. <laughs> We're going to fix this problem within the next episode. Yeah. Just for everyone listening and yeah. watching. <laughs> All right. So where were you at? Um, a couple of insider tips for you. Um, I think that if you come to a dealership prepared and you've done a little bit of research and you know what make, model, and color you want, mm-hmm. um, and you've called and set an appointment. Yes. Because, you know, if you come on a Saturday and everybody in the dealership is with another customer, Mm -hmm. you're going to be waiting for one just to meet the salesperson. Mm -hmm. Once you meet that person, he's going to need to get all that information from you so that he can point you in a good direction if you don't know what you want Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever the case may be. And he may sit there and you may have in your mind what you want, uh, I ha- I've had customers come in and go, you know, I just, I, I really like the the little sports car, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's just really great, da, da, da. I said, oh, that's great. I said, are you married? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have our first baby on the way. Mm, that's not a good car for you then. <laughs> Unless you're getting two cars. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, even if they have two cars, because, I mean, if one person has a sports car and mom's, you know, the new mom's in her, her uh, yeah. minivan, <laughs> She's not going to like you driving a sports car. Yeah. That's going to create a little strife for you in your life, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can get a sporty sedan, you know, or, you know, the, everything's a compromise. Mm-hmm. That's so right. I always try to kind of ease people in from reality or, uh, or you know, wants and needs and, and perception to reality. Yes. Yeah. and Or if you're a, a family of four or and you are looking to add another child in the next year, you're going to have your car for between three and five years. The average person is probably between three and five years. Mm -hmm. In Colorado, it's a little less because hail damage totals out cars quite a bit. And uh, um, so you may go through a car every two and a half years here. Uh, Mm -hmm. About every two years, we have a pretty substantial hailstorm. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So now's a good time to buy a car, too, because a lot of the dealerships, including ours, have had a little hail damage. And you can Mm -hmm. get uh, a little bit of a hail damage car and get a big discount. Yeah, me, I personally, I'm not a big car guy, uh, so... A little bit of hell damage does not bother me at all. <laughs> right, right. You're looking for a deal. Mm-hmm. So uh, through um, talking to you and and just relating to you on yeah. a number of different levels, I would find that out. I'd be like, well, mm-hmm. you're looking for good, solid transportation at a good price. Mm-hmm. That's exactly and, it. Yeah. And, and 
the styling and all that isn't that important to you. Because once I have the money, I'm going to get a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're going to get a, a Kona <laughs> EV. Yeah, you're going to come by and get an uh, EV for me. I've been wanting a Tesla since 2012, so it's going to yeah. be a hard, a hard sell for that. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. It's a, it's a sweet car. It's pretty sparse in the interior. I, I've test driven them, and I was like... I've heard that the interior, they've lacked on that department. Yeah, it's just, it, it really, I mean, it, beautiful acceleration, beautiful car, um, but... Interior. I like how you instantly went to why yeah. you won't want a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just it happens on <laughs> yeah. Um, But I I want my electric car to look like a, a regular car. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to. Uh, the most important thing is is the like for you would probably be like warranty and things like that. Where Tesla only has a three year thirty six thousand mile warranty. I think that's correct. Um, we have a, a 10 year, 100,000 mile drivetrain warranty and on the batteries. Um, and you're not going to get that. So, for I sure. mean, if you're a guy that wants to spend $40,000 or $50,000 on an electric vehicle, how much is the Kona? Um, it is 43, but I believe there's a some sort of a, a national rebate or um, uh, the state and national is about eight thousand dollars off. Mm. So it's a pretty substantial rebate for that car. Nice, yeah. So it brings down to about thirty five thousand when you consider the tax credits and things like that. Yeah, so. yeah. and that's about what Tesla the, the Tesla I want goes for. The three series, yeah, 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 yeah. the Tesla three model, I guess they call it. Yeah. For sure. I yeah. mean, I. I want them all. I mean, I'm, a, I'm he, he. That's when it comes to branding. You know what I mean? Like, right. He's really done a really good job at that. Oh, don't yeah. get me wrong. I think that uh, Elon Musk is a genius. I yeah. mean, he came out with that flamethrower and everything. See, and, and that uh, was just off. Like, that was totally off brand, but it yeah. worked. He he sold hats like a month ago. Like, like, but he always puts a cap on those extra weird products. Yeah, he puts a cap so that they'll sell out. And like, here's an extra hundred thousand dollars, which is like. Like wiping his butt with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, is I really like the SpaceX and all that stuff, and mm-hmm. um, I think that yeah, he's yeah. just really a, a genius when it comes to stuff. I watched the Joe Rogan interview with him, uh, and, yeah. and that that was really interesting, and mm-hmm. um, how he talks and his uh, de- demeanor and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You can just tell this guy is on a whole different level mm-hmm. than most people. He's an alien. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, there's. But I want my cars to to really look like cars, mm-hmm. you know, and, and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with for Tesla. Sure. Teslas are beautiful automobiles. But um, we give you a little more bang for your buck. What do you think about the Cybertruck? The Cybertruck is sexy. Yeah. <laughs> However, our, our new Santa Cruz coming out supposedly in January. It might be delayed a little bit with COVID, mm-hmm. but then you, if you look at that online, the new Santa Cruz truck okay. from uh, Hyundai is gonna be pretty. It's gonna be a game changer because it has those yeah, yeah. lines and stuff on there. Oh, like the the square stuff. Or yeah, the, it's the it's yeah. <laughs> geometrical or whatever yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, i like how you said described it as sexy because did you know that that tesla spells out sexy with their models oh no yeah, the, the three is an e backwards and it's okay. s-e-x-y oh okay <laughs> yeah i get yeah yeah he's so he's so funny <laughs> like he, yeah like the way he names things and everything well, he just had the, the named his kid that that funny name. Oh, too. yeah. yeah. A-X-I-O-T. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that is. But, um, that kid's going to have a hard time in grade school. I can yeah. tell you that. <laughs> I think he had to leg- they had to legally change it. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I, I don't know about the details. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's get back uh, to, to business. So say someone wants to uh, start, start sales, specifically car sales. What would be some advice you would give them? Um, you know, just learn your product. I mean, product knowledge... And once again, mm-hmm. taking care of that customer. Mm-hmm. When they come in, be honest with them. Say, hey, look, I, I don't know everything. I'm new, but I will find out those answers for you. Okay. And be willing to, you know, be mentored by another salesperson mm-hmm. and come in with an open mind. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a good living to be made as a car salesman. I started out and, and I was a lot younger and... Uh, um, in sales period, there's, there's a great living to be made out there, uh, for people. I think, uh, right now real estate's really hot. And if you were just coming straight out of college, going into real estate might be a a good game plan for you, but all the dealerships will have training for you. 
the um, your model, you know, whether that's Hyundai, Ford, whatever, they all have training programs that you can nice. do and learn on your own. So when you're sitting there and you don't have a, a customer in front of you, that's when you have to concentrate on getting that that knowledge Be base. Fully in yeah, it. yeah, and and go in with a cheerful heart. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, don't go into this thinking that you're gonna, you know beat everybody out and everything like that and be the best car salesman in the world. Be humble, you know. I'm going to work harder than the guy next to me and I'm going to work longer Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be smarter than him. I'm going to have more product knowledge Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take care of my customers twice as good as he does. That's the beautiful thing about sales is is you get to determine your price. Well, and and owning a business too, you know. One thing that uh, I've learned in sales... Determine your income, I mean. And this is something I do, and I'm going to give you one of these, too. This is right. called a goal card. And this is my company, one of my one of my companies. Okay. It's called a goal card. And what you do is... And I give these to all my customers Sweet. and my coworkers. And you write your goal, whatever that is, to be a day, a week, a month, a year. You write it on the back. You put today's date and when it's going to be completed. And you carry that card around with you the I whole love this. the whole time. Yeah. And you that's something Manifest. you gotta you gotta pull that out of your pocket every day and look at this and go, what did I do to achieve that goal today? Mm. What did I do to accomplish that Why, goal? Why'd you come up with this idea? Um, I, it was something I heard on a, um, I read in a book or heard on an mm-hmm. audible book or something like that. It just resonated with that. me. <laughs> um, so. Um, but I made up the cards and I, I thought, you know what, I, this is something that I can do to give back to myself, fellow salespeople. Mm-hmm. And I do sell these, um, but, um, I'm going to give you some, so hey, I there you go. It. There okay. you go. I love it. I love the idea of it. I really, I really like the idea of it. Because yep. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Cause everybody, everybody, they say that you will complete your goal. Um, more if you write it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what the certain I do percentage every is. Single, every yeah, day. yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, let, and let, write out that goal, get it done, and then move on to the next goal, and have those small incremental things mm-hmm. to be, you know. So whether that's calling mm-hmm. ten customers today, following up with ten customers today, doing ten things on social media today that would attract customers. Mm-hmm. There's things I do every day to build my business and. How long does it take to call 10 customers for you? I know um, it takes well, longer than expected, but not that long. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. are you are you judging it on, am I going to be voice to voice with 10 customers or am I going to leave 10 emails. voice mails? Or voice mails, yeah, yeah. Um, or sending 10 texts. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to speak voice to voice with 10 customers a day. And that usually takes about an hour, hour mm-hmm. and a half. Because you're dialing. I mean, yeah, you're, yeah. you're sitting there calling people and being like... Is that follow- 10 successful calls or just 10 calls? 10 successful yeah, calls okay. and it has to, I have to get them on the phone. Even if they say, no, I'm not interested. No, I, I'm not interested today. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not thinking about that right now. I got the, the baby's crying in the other room. Great. When would be a better time to talk to you? Mm-hmm. Let's set up an appointment because I know I can help you. I did something similar uh, to that when I first started uh, my video production company. And I think it, it has been f- like phenomenal uh, for me. I think like I haven't had to do that for a while. Because I've had like, you know, just referrals coming in and I've been, I've just been busy and it's been beautiful that I haven't had to do that. But doing it so intensely at the beginning, like I'm working with someone who back in last October, I, I sent an email to and I didn't even know that I did <laughs> right until I put their email in my thing and it's like said that I sent an email to them before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, when, it, when you're looking to create a business Reaching out to, uh, um, there's so many uh, different social media app mm-hmm. platforms. If you're in a neighborhood and you're not advertising on that neighborhood app, if you're specifically... Mm-hmm. Neighborhood apps. I yeah. I haven't really tapped into those yet. Yeah, I mean, if you have a specific area you're looking to target and you're not advertising on that neighborhood app or interacting with, with those people in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. like a lot of realtors special in... What's that app? There's a big one for the it, neighborhood. It's stuff. neighborhood. Neighborhood, okay. I think it is. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, not my audio. No, we lost audio. Okay. I'll just sit here. Oh, you can go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you can keep talking. If my, you my audio's fine. It's <laughs> yeah. yours. Yeah. Dang, that thing shut off completely when that happened. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's still I gotta set it up, but uh, yeah, you can continue talking about yeah. where you're at. So um, 
anyway, you know, I, I just think that there's so many little things that you can do between, I mean, people have made millions off of Instagram. I don't care if you're mm. selling a, a widget or ice cream or you have a, uh, a popcorn stand. It doesn't matter what you're selling. Everybody is selling something, mm -hmm. either a service or a product mm -hmm. to somebody else. E even outside of service or products too, like when you were a kid and you wanted an ice cream from, from your mom, you had to sell that. <laughs> like sells is every, every little aspect of life. Funny you should say yeah. that. Because when I want something, I, I go and I talk to my wife, of course, because yeah. she's in charge. Um, You've got to sell her. <laughs> yeah. So, and she'll sit there and look at me in the eye and she goes, okay, stop selling me because you're, you're, you're going into your salesman mode. And I'm like, oh, sorry, honey. And she's like. And that's probably part of the salesman mode right there a little bit. Yeah. 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 Sorry, honey. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just it, everybody's selling something to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm selling cars. Uh, you know, you may be selling your wife on the need mm -hmm. to get a new boat, or you may be selling a business partner on mm -hmm. the need to spend more money on advertising or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is selling something every day. Mm -hmm. So every moment, every yeah. every moment <laughs> of every day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep. Even if you're selling yourself. <laughs> yeah. In an interview. Yeah. That's all. That's a sales job. Mm -hmm. That's why some people interview great and others don't. Mm -hmm. The people that interview great are salespeople. They've they've learned to establish that rapport with that mm -hmm. other person. Um, you know, so so let's uh, talk about. This could be like the last few questions. I, I think there's two things that I want to touch on. I want to know about your worst month in car sales and your in your best month. Ooh. Um, well, I've had. <laughs> and, and, if it, and on your worst month, what lessons did you learn from that month? Uh, like, like I'm talking about like the absolute, like a month that you remember vividly because it was so bad. Yeah, I mean, I, and not necessarily in car sales. I've sold a lot of other things mm -hmm. in the oh, last yeah, yeah. 22 years in, in sales. Um, I just got back into car sales uh, okay. yeah, in the, the, whole, last, the whole uh, yeah. last month. I had a really good month last month in sales. It was, uh, I was only in with uh, Phil Long about half the month. Okay. And I sold nine cars. Nice. Um, so that means I was on track for 18 mm -hmm. cars for in a month yeah. period, um, which it feels really good. Mm-hmm. Um, cause that's a huge month, mm -hmm. um, for a brand new salesperson like Definitely. myself in, in learning a new product. I, I had a pretty good product knowledge coming in, but once again, that excitement, mm -hmm. that energy, you know, was there. Um, and I think that's what really helped. So I think if you have a really good month, your energy is up and Mindset. you're focused and you're, you're ready to go and you're, mm -hmm. you're on your game. You're listening to people and then giving them good thoughtful answers yeah. to their questions. Because if you're answering, if you're answering every question, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's not a good, that's not a good experience. Because then they don't, they've lost confidence yeah, in yeah. you. Um, and uh, I think one of my worst months in sales was where I worked at previously. I won't mention the company name, but um, I just had a really hard time staying focused, being excited about the product. I was dealing with mm. very analytical people. Um, it was like technical sales mm -hmm. where you had to really have a bunch of product knowledge and the company didn't give us much, a very good training. Mm -hmm. um, the training was very poor and I had the sales skills to communicate with people, but I didn't have the product knowledge because one, they just didn't give us the training on. Yeah. So I, I've had zero months where I sold absolutely nothing Oh, wow. And um, that feels really bad, and mm -hmm. it puts you in a funk and in a really dark place and, for and, a while because it questions yeah. everything that you've done. I mean, I'm a professional. I've done the mm -hmm. sales for 20-plus years. Um, and to sit there and look, reevaluate everything in your mind, you're like, wow, is this really the right thing mm -hmm. for me? And that's where you have to make some hard decisions. Either you have to shift out of what you're doing and make a big change, or you got to stop doing sales. I mean, you got to go into mm -hmm. something else and go do production in a, a, a factory and mm -hmm. sit there or, or, you know, answer questions on the phone or yeah, something. Sales isn't you know? for everyone. No. It isn't. And, um, and if you're a technical person, I, I mean, 
there is a portion of the sales that is for you because mm -hmm. you're very technically minded. I'm much more of a people person. Mm -hmm. I like interacting with people. And during COVID, uh, being at home and not being face to face with people mm -hmm. and not having that interaction was just devastating to me mm -hmm. personally. So, so what was the big shift? Um, I quit that mm -hmm. that company and went to work for uh, Phil Long. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> so I said, it's time to get back out and, and interact with people and, and see them mm -hmm. and, and really uh, get to know uh, just and I, I, whether you buy a car from me or not. Mm -hmm. If you come and see me and we have a good time together and we're laughing and joking, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. I, I, I won. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Phil Long didn't win because, you know, we didn't make any money mm -hmm. and you didn't win because you didn't make a car, but you might have won because you might have made a friend, yeah, you yeah, know, so, <laughs> and met somebody new, Sweet. you know, so that's, that's the fun part of that, mm -hmm. I think is, uh, I think you have to enjoy what you're doing. If you, if you, the longest day in the world is, is just doing something you don't enjoy mm -hmm. doing. Like for me, it's like working outside shoveling rocks. I think yeah. that would be just like the worst. I was doing gutters for a while and every day, I think that's actually what drove me to, to really go full fledged with my business is because it's like you're hot, you're sweating, you're-, you're You you're, made that shift though. Yeah, you yeah. finally <laughs> got to the point where you were- It motivated ready to me make like, screw that change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I worked construction for a short period of time mm -hmm. with my, my brother. Uh, and does, some people love it. Like, that's it's not yeah, for me, though. Yeah, <laughs> did glazing, and he, he was putting in glass, and I worked on a construction site for, like, two mm -hmm. weeks, and I was like, this is definitely not for me. Some people know it's for them, and this is what they want to do. They 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 love it. Like, yeah, that's well, cool. I'm glad are, they love it. Those I don't. are <laughs> dedicated people that are craftsmen. I mean, yeah. I always, I'm always amazed, and my wife says I'm not handy. Um, <laughs> I'm not handy. Um, I mean, if I install a ceiling fan, everybody's like, is it going to fall? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Fair sure. But, um, uh, you can do Ikea furniture, though. Yeah, I don't even know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need, I need instructions with words. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. They do, they do, it's all in, uh, Swedish, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, when I have craftsmen come into my house, I, I've had plumbers and, uh, different people come in. I'm always amazed at the level that they work at yeah. and how they know so much and things like that. So I, God bless them. I, I love every plumber that comes to my house, every electrician, every craftsman that comes to my house. I really appreciate that and that they can do that mm -hmm. job day in and day out. Sure. I just have to interact with people a little bit too much for that. But somebody has to sell that job to me, mm -hmm. has to come in, evaluate and sell that job to me, whether that's a gutter or a roof or... Yeah. Um, a car. There's still a salesman part yeah. for every every business. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I do all the salesman stuff. I wear that hat for my company. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I would like to, uh, I, as my company grows, I'll be outsourcing that a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> and maybe Absolutely. even you know hiring more people to do it as well. You know, yeah. just to accelerate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And and the nice part about commission sales is you can do that without a bunch of overhead mm -hmm. layout. So if you do have a company that needs to expand their sales department. You know, you can always do that as commission sales, yeah, yeah. and you don't have to pay them exactly. a big salary. Mm -hmm. You can make it a portion, a portion of the yeah. profits. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's always a good idea. Yeah, and some some of the video projects we do have a nice com nice commission. Yeah, so, is absolutely what, what I was thinking. And, and yes, yeah, so that's another story. Uh, I guess we can start wrapping wrapping this up. We're probably gonna hit another thirty minutes coming on soon. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I, I mean, I, I, you're talking to a salesman, so you can keep here talking for a long time. <laughs> you asked how why car sales take this long. This is why, because yeah. I get chatty with people. For sure. <laughs> well, uh, this, I guess, has been an episode. Uh, I'm here with Kevin Thomas, and he's at Phil Long. And, oh, yeah, I wanted to ask about, why does it say Peoria, Illinois on here? Okay. Oh, Peoria, Illinois is my hometown. Oh, yeah. nice. Yep. So yep. you're Midwesterner, too. Yep, <laughs> nice. absolutely, yep. Pretty close to Kansas City, I think, right? Not too far, yeah. 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 <laughs> nice, yep. nice. And that's where I'm from, if you guys didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, why... Why is that on your name tag and not, because you've been here for 20 something years, right? Yeah, um, it gains rapport with people. I mean, oh. I've lived all over the country and, and they always put your hometown on your name tag. Mm. Um, Especially so. in Colorado Springs, when about 80% of the people are from somewhere else. Yeah. That's, that's important. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like I've lived in Peoria, I've lived in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. here, Florida, I mean, and, and traveled quite a bit, and w I was previous military too, so that's always yep. a thing that we can talk about, mm -hmm. the establishing rapport with uh, other folks in the military. We tend Sweet. to trust each other. 
So Nice. Well, uh, this has been the Colorado Springs po Business Podcast, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Sell it. <laughs>